Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV and on this episode we are unboxing and doing a full assembly process on a 46 inch basketball goal by Lifetime. Now this goal has been a long time coming. Both kids have wanted a basketball goal for a super long time so we are excited to bring this one to you guys and we hope this video helps you, so stay tuned. And all right, we're gonna get right into the unboxing to start this off. As always, there will be links down in the description for you to buy this in particular goal. Heads up, you will need help to get this thing assembled and you do need to set aside an ample amount of time for the install. Hopefully, you can learn from the mistakes that we made. Follow along as we go through the instructions. Thanks so much for this one, enjoy. See you at the end. All right, we are inside the shop. We've got the instructions here and it gives us a little bit of information that is very important. It has the tools that are required. So let me show you what we're gonna take. All right, lays it out here. The Allen wrenches are included, but all this other stuff you need, the funnel and the hose and the sand would be for when you're filling the base. So we don't need that stuff right now. We do have a block of wood, check. We've got the rubber mallet. These wrenches I actually don't have here in the shop because everything is kind of in storage, but I do have this one. And I'm just gonna bring the rest of my little stand-up tool pouch here by Tuffville. If you are not familiar with the brand, they are awesome. We're gonna bring this pad because we're out there on the concrete and the concrete's really pokey on our knees, so. Yeah, and this pad actually is by AWP. This has been used for about three years, so don't give them any harsh thoughts because it wore off. It wore off because we use it, right? Yeah. And with a box, we opened it up and laid each section out so we could put the backboard here and then all the other parts inside of this one. There's the posts, there's the tools, there's the stand. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is basically just go through the instructions step by step. And that way, at home, if you have the instructions out, you can just follow along with what you see us doing. For the pole assembly, this is the little parts kit. Phillips screwdriver. This piece here fits over the slot and it slides down and then you put the screw through it with the little plastic washer. All right, here's the screw where it went in and it looks like that's what they're asking for in the instructions. So you're gonna do the same thing as last time, the screw, the washer, into the, the middle pole, into the bottom pole, and then we're gonna lock the whole thing together by hitting it on the piece of wood. And you find the side with the slot. Uh -huh. You ready? Two plugs, one small, one large, and each side of the pole has a small and a large hole for it, these to go into. So these go on this side. Look over here, this just goes in there. Now in the instructions next, it says we have to slam the post down on the piece of wood five or six times. It even gives you this warning message that says, once you do this, there's no going back. So I'm assuming that you're seating that screw that goes into that slot you're gonna seat that into place and you're gonna be done. So, that's what we're gonna to try to do now. All right, let's set this down. So I guess that's why they want you to use the wood because if you were slamming this on concrete, you'd probably mess up the bottom of the post. So I'm hoping that that seated everything like it should. We're gonna continue. 
Now we're looking at this section here. We're gonna start working on the base assembly. Laid everything out that they wanted. The two wheel sections, these posts, and then all these components were inside of this BCG bag. And then here are the two arms. You've got one in that's just flat and straight like this. And you've got one that is curved on the end like that. The flat side is the side that attaches to this guy. So this will go in this way. Through the top, you'll have this. And then on the bottom side, you'll use the black washer with the locking nut. Here's the bottom side showing with that correct washer on there and the top. So you do not want the plastic one. Do the metal on the bottom, same as on the top side. On the other side, we use the adjustable wrench and then these robo grips. On this side, I went and got a half inch adapter. This is my impact driver. So we're gonna use this instead on this side and I'll probably be using this for the remainder of the build just because this is gonna be way easier. Once you get it hand tight, it can't fall out. So I'm gonna grab that locking nut on the bottom with the robo grips here, and then I'm gonna use the impact driver on the top. All right, now to assemble the wheel section of this. This is our second time doing it because I did it wrong the first time, so rewind. These black washers actually do not go on the bottom of the base support arms. They actually are used here. And the long bar of the two bars that you need. The long one goes on the far end and this one goes on the inside. I actually had them flip the first time I did it, so save yourself the pain and do it right the first time. All right, now we wanna assemble the support brackets to the actual pole. They do give you two Allen keys and the locking bolt that goes between the two. So we're gonna install this now across here. I got this. Now that we have the base part assembled, the next part is to start putting together what goes behind the backboard so that that can actually mount on everything. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit more difficult than assembling the pole and the base. So we're gonna get started on that. Quick overview of the parts that you're gonna need. And just like before, we're just gonna follow along with this and bring you along for the ride. So the part kit that you want is BCS. Looks like we're gonna be starting off with these two pieces here. Okay, so on these two pieces here, you want them to line up the top side facing in and they line up with each other just like this. And then this lower hole is where you're gonna put this guy through there. Like this. Just like that is what they're saying. They want those pieces that hang down to line up with those notches. Okay, so this piece comes in the instructions and it unfolds like this. And when you fold the sides up, it actually sits down inside between these two pieces once you have the bolt in there. So when this goes in there, you want the first part to be lined up with these outside holes on the brackets. And this piece here is gonna be right above there in the one that's marked number one. And then these are the two sleeves that it comes with. These are hollow tubes. Uh, they're designed to fit in that gap between. So something like this. See that down inside of there. So this goes inside and then this will go through. You have a couple of these tiny nuts to go on either side. What I'm left with before I tighten anything is this. 
So the other setup goes in this spot right there. And I'm just hand tightening for now. We'll see if we need to tighten this further in a minute. Now we kept the cardboard underneath this because I don't want to, I'm doing this on a concrete slab. So this, I can slide this around without hopefully marring up the front of it. It may actually have a protective coating, but I'm just not sure. Now in this section, you've got a couple of bolts like this and you've got four washers total. And it says we're also gonna use these locking nuts. And these have almost like a built-in washer on the back side, And you can tell by that little piece of polymer in there or plastic, that's the locking nut function. The top of the instruction page does not show this piece, but then when you look at the diagram, it's telling you to use it. So a little bit weird there, but just be ready for this. Now it looks like this piece is actually gonna fit right in there. And there are two holes that that lines up with. Now this section here with this bolt part that's hanging down, that's gonna go through those holes there. So on the opposite side of this, the rim assembly is gonna to attach to the front of the backboard. So in order to do this, you probably are gonna need someone to help because you're gonna to need to stand this part up and hold all this to the back while you're attaching the rim to the front. All right, so we've got this stood up here. Memphis is holding pressure on the backside, these two brackets. And then we use that piece of wood to just hold this to the front. Now I'm gonna move the camera around to the other side. You can see through the backboard and see the hoop over there. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. On this side, you can see those two U-bolts sticking through. And on the hoop itself, you've got some connections here. Now on the back side, they want you to feed these two bolts through, the washers on the back, and this part sticking out the front because you're gonna attach the locking nuts on through the hoop. So through these holes. All right, so from the back side, this is what you're looking to have here. This bolt goes through, and then that U-shape goes through on both sides, which gives you that. And we figured out we can put a two by four and a little bit of cardboard to balance the rim so that you can actually get to these. Now, I still have to tighten them, but I wanted you to see how it's supposed to be assembled. So you're trying to tighten these nuts here on the front, and this piece is just not long enough, so Imagine my drill is here, it doesn't reach. So I have an extension bit. Now this isn't normally for impact drivers, but I'm not putting a ton of force on this thing. But this one should allow me to get in there to those upper ones because these lower ones, you can just tighten those from the back side. On the front side, I just held the nut with one of these. And then on the back side, because you have access to the head of the nut, you can easily use your impact driver or a wrench or whatever but on the front side, we need that extender. Here is that now with that extender on there, and I would never normally want to use something like this. It's kind of silly, but let's see if it works. And yes, it does reach. All right, we got these bolts tightened on. Finally, I couldn't hold the camera and do that simultaneously. You can see they are all tight. And next up, we've got these two bolts here, which they have like a little bit of deep threading or wide threading. And it looks like you're gonna bend these two brackets over and then attach them to the back of the backboard. And just when you thought they couldn't switch up the sizes of stuff again, this one is a 3 8 on the top. So that makes four uh, nut drivers that you need or wrenches, adjustable wrenches or whatever. So I give this engineering a one out of a million. And here's what that back bracket assembly looks like after those two bars are bent over. It is assembled like that. Those two 3 8 screws are in. This is all tight and we're ready for the next part. Okay, we are now onto the back side and this will be the assembly that, lock, that mounts onto the pole. For this section, you do need the BCR tool kit. That is this big one. You also have four posts like this or poles. These are hollow and you've got four of these. You've got this part here, which has the measurements on it. And obviously it looks like it, it folds up. So we'll see what it tells us to do there. And you've got this piece that has this little tooth design where I'm assuming as you adjust it, it can sit and hold itself together. So you're going to start by taking two of these. And if you notice the, the distance between these openings here, this large one is the one that faces towards the backboard like that. And you're going to feed through. 
like this in a black washer. And then it's gonna go through black washer and then another pole. Black washer and another pole. And you get one of these on the end. And it does look like this thing is supposed to fold up because it fits in to the other piece. So this piece will be held like that. And this piece that we looked at earlier, kind of see how they line up with each other. This is gonna sit down inside of there before it gets assembled. And you can see here on the very bottom, these pieces all line up. So that's where it's gonna hook on down there. So for this bottom part, we're gonna need two of these again and the same thing, one of these with the two black washers. Okay, we're gonna have Memphis get down low with the camera while I do this part because it looks like all these little layers where this thing attaches, it looks like they all kind of weave together and I don't really have any way of showing this. So again, another difficult part. So again, this piece is set up like this and you've got your black washer. This is gonna go through here, but this needs to be in the middle. So what they show on the instructions is this is on the outside, this goes in between those, and then this piece goes on the inside of the plastic. So you're basically weaving this whole thing together. Now they're all lined up. One side is through, you can see, and it's all layered up like it should be. Got it. Okay, and another one of these. Hand tight, and that is how that nightmare should look, hopefully you had the same luck. Let's continue. They had one skinnier long bolt with a smaller nut for this part here. And what you're doing is you're linking these two together across this adjustment bar. So there's kind of a view of how that should be. And they show it pretty well in the instructions, but it's still a little bit confusing. So if you look at what we've got there. So basically that bar in there is how you're adjusting your height when you adjust this thing from the ground later on. So we're gonna tighten all these nuts down now that we're confident they're all in the correct place. And the next step is to go back over there to the pole. And these four posts here actually mount on the pole. We've got a couple of large nuts left and white washers, and then two of these bigger bolts left. And that's what's gonna be mounting this thing onto the main pole here in a sec. So if you have one of these, you can adjust it on to one of these nuts on one side, like that. And then on the other side, you can just turn opposite of each other. And it says it just wants these touching the pole, so you don't wanna over tighten it to where you're compressing. So I think that's why it's important to use hand tools for this instead of the impact driver for this part, because it does say it wants these to be able to move. Okay. There, you come forward, and I'm gonna try to get this first one in. There we go. That look. Right. That bolt is The holding. second one will be a lot harder. Again, I tried to keep these not too tight, but tight enough to where I won't have to mess with this very often. And now we need to get this filled up with some water and then we'll stand it up. All right, so we're filling it up with water now. You could also use sand if you wanted and you'd use like a funnel. And this process just takes a few minutes. All right, so we've got the hoop in place. Now we have it currently at eight feet uh, for the tiny guy here to learn a little bit more fundamentals and then we'll raise that thing up later.
Twitter. Oh, swish! And all right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Overall, we really love this basketball goal. If you are in the market for one, I hope this is the one that you will consider. Again, links down in the description if you'd like to check them out. If you'd like to see what else we have going on, please check us out at Tough Guys TV on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever you'd like. And most of all, thank you for watching. If we missed anything, please let us know down in the comments. This is an extremely difficult build. Lots of layers to this thing. I don't care how experienced you are building whatever you may build. Building a basketball goal, it's a difficult one. Thanks again, guys. See you in the next video.